Labor and Debarment. Debarment. Owners, developers, and contractors must not be debarred or excluded from receiving federal funds. Following an offer of the funding, the ownership entity, LLC or LP, developer and contractor must register in the System for Award Management at www.sam.gov. All other contractors will be required to submit a certification of non-debarment. Davis-Bacon. Housing Trust Fund is not subject to Davis-Bacon requirements. For home funds, Davis-Bacon only applies to projects with 12 or more home-assisted units. The Davis-Bacon Act requires determination of and payment of federal prevailing wages on covered projects. If it is determined that Davis-Bacon applies to a project, the development team must have in place a process for determining those prevailing wages, maintaining weekly payroll records, and ensuring that all workers are paid in compliance with the wage determinations. Section 3 Requirements The revised Section 3 final rule can be found at 24 CFR Part 75. Regulations and guidance can be found on HUD Exchange at www.hudexchange.info slash program slash section dash three. Section three requirements apply to all home or housing trust fund developments receiving $200,000 or more in total federal financial assistance. Unlike previous Section 3 requirements, which only apply to new hires, the final rule requires tracking of all hours worked on a project. Section 3 requires targeting of 25% of hours worked on a project to be performed by Section 3 workers, who are workers earning at or below 80% of area median income. Unlike other income testing in HUD programs, this is individual income, not household income. A Section 3 worker may also be someone employed by a Section 3 business concern or someone who is participating in a youth build program. Additionally, Section 3 sets a benchmark of 5% of all work hours going to targeted Section 3 workers. These are Section 3 workers who are A, employed by a Section 3 business concern, B, a youth build participant, or C, living within the service area or neighborhood of the project. To meet Safe Harbor benchmarks, it must be demonstrated that efforts are made to recruit Section 3 and targeted Section 3 workers. An applicant developer must provide a Section 3 plan describing effort that will be taken to hire Section 3 workers and must include language in all contracts or subcontracts regarding Section 3 compliance. The owner must provide at project completion an accounting of all hours worked on the project and how many hours were worked by Section 3 or targeted Section 3 workers as well as a description of any efforts made to hire and or train Section 3 workers. Questions? Please contact housingdevelopment at kshousingcorp.org.